Hi, everybody. Chris Engelbert with Engelbert Financial Advisors in Allentown, Pennsylvania, with our first of the month update. Happy New Year, everybody. We are rolling into January 2023, and we really want to say good riddance to 2022. Again, I always start out with a cartoon, and what's on everybody's mind is what is the Fed doing? Here's Jerome Powell, and we have a little uh, holiday uh, jingle set to the Jerome Powell. Uh, basically, the Fed wants the U.S. economy to slow, and they're doing that by raising interest rates. That's been the theme for 2022. We'll see what uh, happens in 2023 if the Fed finally says, hey, uh, no MAS, no more raising short-term interest rates. Now, let's review what happened in 2022. Obviously, we started out at all-time highs, and one of the things that you know people are really having trouble when they look at their portfolios is they don't realize that we ended 2021 at literally all-time highs in the major stock averages. And then we had the Ukraine war. We had a, a couple of big crypto hedge funds blow up. We made a low at the end of September. And then we had a pretty good rally in October, November. But again, we ended the year with a whimper, not a bang. Uh, the Santa Claus rally didn't really materialize like a lot of people thought, including myself. And we had the S&P 500 finished down 30 to finished at 38.39 for the year down almost 20%. So what does that mean uh, going into next year? Uh, at the end of the video, we're gonna give you some ideas what we think is gonna happen in 2023. But the other big story was interest rates in 2022. We saw the Fed increase interest rates at the fastest pace ever in history. And when they cranked up short-term interest rates, uh, bond buyers got scared and dumped every single type of bond out there. It didn't matter if you were tax-free bonds, mortgage backs, but people have to remember, many bonds act differently in a rising rate environment. Didn't make any difference last year when the Fed started to crank up short-term interest rates and try to control inflation. We saw uh, bond funds decline anywhere from 14 to 18%. So for you conservative investors, it was a very tough year because obviously as an advisor, I put bonds into a portfolio to help protect the portfolio and add some income and the worst year ever before this year, 2022, being down 14 to 18%, was down 4%. So you literally had four, almost five times the decline in the bond market in 2022, which was really difficult. Now, it looked like we we're getting a little bit of reprieve because we saw interest rates in October, November start to float down, but then they rallied back up to 3.9%. And again, uh, they finished the year uh, literally at three and three quarters percent on the 10-year treasury. Now, one of the things and one of the themes for 2023 is you've got to be looking at some of these short-term bond funds, i.e. short-term bank CDs out there. We are seeing bank CDs at rates that I haven't seen in almost nine or 10 years. Now, we custody at TD Ameritrade, and every week TD Ameritrade goes out and there's 100 banks that come online and say, here are our rates for the following week, for one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, nine month bank CDs. So we think that if you're a conservative investor, you really got to take advantage of these short-term bank CDs uh, because again, these rates are at, at levels we haven't seen in almost nine years. So let's talk about what we think is going to happen in 2023. And I pulled this up because I want to say, do the market pundits ever get it right? Now, I don't really forecast where the S&P 500 is going to finish for the year. I think that's a very difficult game. And you can see that back in December of 2021, many market pundits for 2022 were forecasting as high as 4,400 on the S&P 500, all the way up to 5,330 on the S&P 500. Well, guess what? The S&P 500 closed the year at 3,893, well off of where people these market pundits were forecasting. So what are they forecasting for 2023? Almost the exact opposite. The high forecast is 4,500 for the year. The low forecast is 3,400 for the year. So the majority of market pundits going into 2023 are forecasting that the S&P 500 is going to be flattish to lower for the year. Now, one of our major theses is if you've been watching our first of the month videos is that we think we are now in a structurally fair market. That as we move from a low interest rate, low inflation uh, era to a high interest rate, higher inflation era, you're going to be in a sea of change as far as the investment markets go. Our major thesis is that we're going back to the 80s where you had higher energy prices, higher inflation, um, and higher interest rates, but it was also one of the best years for stocks out there. The problem is the current stock market is in a transition phase until we get 
to the point where people understand that we are in a higher interest rate, higher inflation, and higher energy prices. So the, what I mean by that is that we don't believe uh, any longer, for at least the near future, that the stock market is just going to take off and go straight up like it did in 2020 and 2021. What we think we're going to see is a structurally fair market where the stock market is going to rally and decline. If er first quarter earnings in 2023 come out better than expected, you could see us rally to the top end of the range, maybe get to 4,100, 4,200 on the S&P 500. If interest rates continue to rise, uh, and the bear sentiment continues to overwhelm the investment markets. Maybe the S&P 500 gets to the lower part of the range, around 3,400, 3,500 on the S&P. But what you want to do is you want to be prepared for this. Now, be, because what happens a lot of times is that the markets are really psychology driven. And we always like to show where people are in the greed and fear. And you've got a lot of people that in 2021 were way over in this euphoria section, thinking that prices could never go down. 2022, we saw a lot of anxiety, denial, fear, especially amongst a lot of the work from home stocks, et cetera. I think we're in the discouragement and dis dismay stage uh, because a lot of people are looking at their portfolios for 2022 in both stocks and bonds and say, hey, I didn't make any money and I think things aren't gonna really get that much better. Again, we've been saying for some time, surprise is on the upside. The bearish sentiment is still overwhelming. So what do we think the trends are for 2023? We think that active management is making a comeback. There was a lot of people that dumped a lot of money into passive investments, i.e. Vanguard index uh, funds. And they said, hey, we're going to set it and forget it. I've been saying on several of my videos, you've got to be very careful because these index funds are driven by Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and many of these stocks have experienced declines, and we think they're going to be a drag on these big cap-weighted uh, uh, indexes that are out there, and there's a lot of people with a lot of money. Again, I've said higher interest rates in bonds uh, make CDs and tax-free bonds very attractive. It's offering a safe haven. It's nothing wrong with parking some money in some CDs for six months uh, until you feel better about yourself as far as what's going on with your portfolio and getting your portfolio to stabilize. But again, we want to make sure that one bad year in the investment markets you know, really creates what we call recency bias, where people are like, hey, market's really bad. It's going to stay really bad. Think back to 2020 and 2021. Everybody thought the markets were going to be bad. They took off big on the upside. They rallied hard uh, in 2021. And everybody's like, hey, 2022 is going to be a great year. Obviously, it wasn't. Don't fall into the same trap where you're saying, hey, 2022 is going to be bad. 2023 is going to be worse. We don't believe that's going to happen. We believe there's too many good things happening in the U.S. economy. So what does that mean for you? Again, we did a video a couple uh, months ago entitled, Should I Stay or Should I Go? A lot of people are going to review their portfolios and they're going to say, I got to do something. Well, check yourself for a moment, because if your life situation hasn't changed, if you're still working or if you're still uh, you know, doing fine uh, and you have a long-term investment strategy, you may not want to change it. Just because you've had one bad year in performance doesn't mean you go and radically change your investment strategy. If you're getting closer to retirement or there's some major life changes going on, maybe you do want to change your investment strategy. We encourage you to call us and talk to us about it. But again, be very careful about recency bias out there. And again, we think that 2023 could end up being a lot better than what people expect out there. We think that there's some areas of opportunity in both stocks and bonds in 2023, and we're looking forward to a new year. So that's all we have for the first of the month update. We'll be back soon. Take care. We'll talk to you.